thank you so much for for doing this and, and being willing to jump into a controversial topic yes. for some people. So first question is, what is your understanding of gender conflict in ministry? Okay, so I, it's hard to like separate that from secular in ministry, but it's not because we do have a different understanding, but at the same time we have to understand that secular plays into it. Like we're going to school uh, in, a, in work and in different places and we're hearing this on the news about there being 50 different genders. Right. Um, but, and so then there's this conflict in the world that's going on that sometimes may play into our thinking. But if for ministry, I think it's just that not um, understanding that there are differences in men and women, and then we ha you have a conflict. And a conflict can bring resolution, and it's a good thing. Right. And I'm sure that you're going to talk about that in all the other sessions. I'm sure that this will be drilled. Um, but the thing that I think about with con uh, gender conflict is sometimes it's people has good intentions. Mm -hmm. They have a strong believing of something about genders, and they think you're not abiding by it, even a biblical truth. And when you get into um, talking about women in ministry, this conversation is huge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it, like I had to write for my undergrad classes um, at Lee University. I had to write a paper on women in ministry. Oh, wow. And so I re read these different books, and there was one book that just this guy was on a, his own quest, his own journey, and he interviewed different ministers about this, and there are such good arguments both ways. Right. And and so you, if you are listening to uh, your favorite preacher, and he wholeheartedly says, no, I don't believe in women in ministry, you get that in your head, and then you have those scriptures in your head, right. like, well, this is how they use those scriptures, and most people use the, you know, the scriptures that Paul talk about women not being allowed to be, speak in ministry, uh, in the church, not to have authority over a man, uh, the scriptures about uh, keeping your head covered, those right. type of things, they like, well, yeah, that's what the Bible says. And so then you've, you've got that in your head and you go to a ministry conference, a ministry service, or you're asked to listen to a woman preacher and it's like there's conflict inside your own mind because yeah. of this until you come to a own understanding, a piece about it yourself, you're going to have that conflict. But once you have resolved that conflict, then you have other people that have not resolved that conflict. Right, and you get to help them. And, and they're like, well, the Bible says this. Right. And so then this is good intentions. You know, they're like, they're going to, like, we all have, not everybody. I have a, I have a <laughs> not, sense. Not everyone. <laughs> I have a sense of justice. And it's like, right. when I see that something's not right, I have. You want to do something about oh, it. Oh, it's like, I just, I can't, I don't have peace. Like, well, that's not right. He, you know, yep. this is even in my marriage. It's like, well, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you, you know, it's not like, right. just let it go. It, you know, no, this, you shouldn't do yeah. that. And, and so the people that have that sense of justice are like, she shouldn't be allowed to do that. Or he, you know, mm. and so there becomes this conflict. Um, generally, did that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. I know that for the longest time, I was one of those people who struggled with women to have, if you will, like a senior pastor authority in a church because of exactly what you're talking about. This is what the Bible says, yes. right? And yet the reality is we got to look at a lot more. Like there, it's one thing to say the Bible says this, and it's another to say, no, that's just how you're reading it. Yes. Right? There's yes. that really important distinction. Um, and I'm very grateful to be a part of a conference and a denomination that we believe that women can have that authority. Yes. Um, and yet, I appreciate your point that you brought up just a little bit. There's a difference between men and women. Our world does not like distinction for whatever reason. Yes. And maybe it was because a lot of people, uh, women were expected to do one thing. Men were expected to do another. And that line was not crossed. So gender is a distinction with, between uh, biology, right? The biochemistry that's within us, reproductive organs, those kinds of things. Yes, two. But, yeah, two, <laughs> absolutely, male, female, and that's kind of it, right? So as Christians, we say that's it. And anything beyond that, uh, it's an interruption and a perversion of what God has intended and designed. That's a good way to say it, yes. Um, and yet, gender roles, are far more cultural. Women are expected to do blank. Men are expected to do blank. And that's not always true across all places. Um, I appreciate when Paul talks about in Galatians, there's neither male nor female, yes. slave nor master, Greek or, 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 or Jew. 
um, but Christ and us oneness. That doesn't mean those things don't matter, but primarily our identity comes from Christ. And that's all well and good, but the reality is some people may get all bent out of shape and bothered by a woman or a man leading where they shouldn't. So as a woman in ministry, how have you dealt with this type of conflict, or has there been conflict that you've had to deal there with? There definitely has been conflict. Um, there, for, where there was a period of time that we were pastoring in South Carolina, and my husband was gone, so he could not be there on Wednesday nights. He, he drove and was gone on Wednesday nights, so I had to do it by myself. And there were men in the church that had trouble with saying, she's in charge, she's leading this. And they, they really challenged me. And, uh, you know, like when I'm teaching, they'd ask specific questions. And mm. it was, you could tell that that intent was to kind of pull me down, to discredit me, to establish that they had more authority. And, you know, the conversations later would be that, well, you know, I could be doing this and I could be doing that. Um, I, I'm very fortunate that I have my husband that backs me up and he says, when you're talking to her, you're talking to me when you're talking, you know, and we have that, we strive, we don't always, but we strive for that unity to where we're saying that, you know, we speak for each other and we, we attempted to co-pastor. Now for me, that the headship part was no problem. He's, you have to have somebody. Uh, and I, I believe that's what God is saying. You have to have somebody where the ultimate authority stops. You have you, two heads are a monster. So we, we co, co-pastored, but he was the head. Right. He was the final say. He was the senior pastor in, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, and I think that's what's important is to un- understand that you can be equal, but you still have to have um, somebody that has the final say in everything. I mean, right. in, a, in a, co- a corporation, in a marriage, in a church, in a, in a meeting. I mean, there has to be something because we're in the absence of leadership, leaders, something else Right. A leader will take place in there. Definitely. Um, so that weird antagonism, um, do you think that it was like um, an, uh, an animosity towards you because you were a woman? Or um, with, without saying that they were being sexist, because there's there are people who will use scripture for their own selfish gain. Right. Um, we see this during um, uh, Deep South slavery before the Civil War. Yes. We see this in Europe where people are being oppressed. So clearly people can twist scripture. Definitely. To suit their own gain. But then at the same time, there are people who are genuinely striving to follow Scripture. So how do you deal with blatant sexism where people are using God to make much of themselves and those people who are just really wrestling with being good Christians and saying, the, but the Bible says this. And how, how do you work I, through to navigate that? Well, I think um, you have to know when to argue and when not to. I had a supervisor and she asked me, and this was not gender related, but she asked me, do you believe in speaking in tongues? And I was like, yes. And she was like, well, I don't. And um, she's like, what do you think that's going to do? Like when we get to heaven, what is God going to do? I'm like, we won't care. <laughs> you know, and she's like, right. yeah, okay. And she, she was okay with that. Mm-hmm. But later on, you know, as she was a, a true Christian woman, mm. but we found, I found out that there were complete differences. Um, like for when they are at her church, they, um, she really does cover her head. Oh, wow. They have little coverings. It looks, looks like a little doily to me, but it's, mm-hmm. it's a cute little cloth that goes on and, and they do not, the women do not speak in the church and they are silent. And so she, she learned to respect me for who I was knowing that I was in ministry and that I mm-hmm. was leading at times. Um, so there are just things like we have to say, we both believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, right? And that's where the cutting off is, and we'll we'll sort it out at the cross. You know, that's there are good. things like that. Now, in your church, it's going to be a little bit different. That's the workplace. In church, it will be a little bit different. You do have to. Um, you, you we belong to a denomination, so we are fortunate that we wholeheartedly believe the right. principles and beliefs of the denomination. And so that is our advantage. And if anyone comes into our church, we're like, well, this is what we believe and this is how we teach it. Right. And really people have to have a choice, you know, um, but you can't really um, argue that. And I, here's what, what I found with God. He's, he's just so cool. He, he is. He's just I so, love that. Well, God he's, is so cool. He oh, is. That's good. You just, there's been times that I've been ministering and I'm totally like, what do I say to this? Somebody's asking a question. Yeah. And honestly, I will look down. This has happened to me and I'm like, 
oh, there's the scripture. What do you know? And then I say the scripture and it, God just knows how to help you. He's always helped me. So I say yeah. that, that he's not partial to me in this way. He helps us to know what to say and how to defend it. And it is a hard topic because uh, there are so many strong beliefs in, in ministry, in right. pe people that are sold out Christians that you would listen to on the radio or things like that. And then it's like you like, oh, they don't believe in women. Right. You know, and I've heard other pastors say, well, if God can speak through a donkey, then surely he can talk through a woman. <laughs> You know, <laughs> not not making a comparison that women and donkeys are equivalent, no, but, but, I, but I like that. I like I like that a lot. Yeah, of course, I mean, God can use whoever He wants. But I, also, I think that um, it's important to understand that the differences. Okay, so I had took also took another class that I'm, I'm like for education, as you can see. Absolutely. I learned so much at Lee University, and this class was basically about marriage, but it taught about men and women and that if you go back to creation and even Jesus in Matthew 19 I believe said that God created the male and female mm -hmm. so God, Jesus kind of comes back and reaffirms it the fall of man kind of messes things up in so many ways but God created the male and female so it doesn't say that God created man in his image but not woman right he created both in his image and so they are both uh, in his image and so that that doesn't take away from our personhood so yeah. maybe there are distinct differences but god created us as equals and we that that is something we have to understand mm -hmm. but then you don't stop there because you have to say like there are i, I think it's ridiculous for a woman I, can i say ridiculous yeah go ahead okay so i think it's ridiculous for a woman to think that she can do some of the jobs that men do and say that she's equal to it god gave men more strength and i I don't have any problem with that. I, I like being a woman and I like my husband being a man. You know, there's just, you have to acknowledge the differences. And if we are in Christ, we embrace those differences yeah. and we say, man, God's really creative, isn't he? Yeah. Um, but then I also think that because of those differences, we don't put up safeguards sometimes. Um, you know, yeah. because, you know, like, like when my kids were growing up, uh, Oh, I, my best friend can be a guy. No, it can't. And, you know, a lot of people might argue that. But, sure. but the problem is that there are differences and there is a physical attraction mm -hmm. that happens that maybe, maybe the one person feels nothing, never sees it coming, mm -hmm. and the other one does. And so we just, and then you, you, because of accusations or things like that in the church, you have to put up safeguards. Um, and, and sometimes... Things like this can come from, um, I don't know if you want me to share a story. If you'd like to, please. All Personal right, I, experiences also always okay. you know, hit home, right? Yeah. So I, we had this, this idea that we um, would not be like driving and going on trips or um, do things alone with the opposite sex. That was mm -hmm. something my husband and I kind of put a role in. And I was a part of, a, and I was in, on an executive board for an outreach ministry in mm -hmm. Aiken. And um, in South Carolina, I was on the executive board, and I was also the interim director at that time. the The board of the director president was working with me, and we were trying to. Idea was to go out and try to get support mm -hmm. from all the local churches. Sure. And we had an opportunity to go to speak to a local Baptist district, and so there were going to be several people there. And he asked me to go, and. We were taking things with us and things like that. So he said, would you like to ride with me? Yes, no problem. And um, I doubt that he's going to watch this. So I think I'm safe. And I, I don't even know who you're talking about. Good. And okay, we're good. I, you we're haven't good. given a name, so you're safe. Um, so he, he, we went to this. We spoke. Everything went well. Afterwards, he said, would you like to grab lunch? And I'm thinking, I am hungry. It's, he, I'm riding with him. No big deal. You know? You're thinking this. Y yes, I'm thinking yeah. this. And he, 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 at that time, I don't know about now. Sure. Uh, he was a board member in his church. Mm -hmm. So he is doing ministry. He's a board member. He's also a, a prominent person in the city as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, the gist of the conversation led to asking, like, without asking, but asking me if I would be willing to have an affair. Wow. Just like that. And I'm like, I'm so naive at the time because I can't believe that this would happen. Right. But it did. Especially by a Christian man who's prominent in the community, community. there's kind of an expectation of 
yeah. they're not going to do that. Oh, you would never think that. And, and yet... And evidently he oh, had before gosh. and was looking for something else. And I, I just was floored. And of course, wow. I went home and told my husband about it. And I soon found another reason to resign, and I just left it alone at that. There are some people that would pursue that, but I just right. left it alone at that and left it to God to take care of. But there's things like that that you just you don't, you don't expect. And right. um, you just have to know that that, that is a conflict, really. Yeah. It, it really is, because um, what do you do with that? Yeah. And so there's just things that you need to do to put safeguards up so yeah. that it doesn't happen. Because we're different. We are, yeah, men, it, men and it, women are different. And those differences are not something that we should be you know, trying to hide or to say, oh, there are no differences. Yeah. It's the whole Annie Oakley mentality of anything you can do, I can do better. And yet you just look at men and women and you go, no, they're very different. <laughs> yes. They're very different. And, and yes. you're right. There are differences between physicality and ability and skill. And that doesn't make somebody less. Right. A, a, a difference isn't a negative thing. It can be very much a positive thing. Um, I remember my wife uh, telling me the story of um, uh, she was watching a TV show called Bones. People really like the show for some reason. I, did. I, I, I watched seen, it. You watch it? Yes. Okay. And she was telling me, and, and was she good. was like, Taylor, watch this clip. And the clip was that the two main characters were looking at bone structure, and they're like, oh, it's a female. And they're like, how do you know it's a female? And they're like, look at the bone structure. And they just go through the, like, a man's bone structure is this, and a woman's bone structure is this. And I just sat there and was like, I never knew. Like in hindsight, you're like, well, duh. Like, of course. Yeah. But 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 if you, but if you're not thinking about the differences, then it's like, yeah, we can identify people by their bones. Yeah. So if somebody goes through a gender change and they die, and a thousand years later we dig up their bones, oh. regardless of how they identified, this is their gender kind of a thing. I think because so many people, not so many people, but in the church and even in the secular world, women were often seen as second-class citizens. Yes. And as Christians, we look at what Jesus did in the Bible, and it's like, nope, women are elevated, women are valued, women and children are elevated and valued to a place in society that they, they didn't have. Right. And for us as Christians to say, oh, no, no, now we're going to revert back. That's good. Right? That's a really good way. I, 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 I think that's dangerous. Yeah. Um, I heard a minister once say that um, we love our neighbors. We don't use them. And um, the story that you were telling about the minister, it, it sounds to me he wasn't valuing you as a neighbor. Mm. You were a thing yes. in, his, in his eyes. Um, and that is the worst thing, I think, that as men that we can do to women or children, that they are objects yes. that we get to use for whatever reason, whether it is to have an affair or, to, or as a tax write-off <laughs> or, or, or to use them as a stepping uh, as a rung in the ladder that we're trying to grow up, I think that I think yes. that's frightening. Um, not because women are and children are weak compared to men, but they're to be valued. That men, women, children, we're to value each other, to recognize the differences, to recognize the distinctions, and to be kind of excited about that. Yes, that's a good way to say it. Right? Because I, like I said, I I I, I want to be a woman. I like being a woman. It's yep. like I I love that God made us this way. You yep. know that that there are differences and. You know, I think the headship and submission, I think people had trouble with that. Mm. Um, they're looking at it from a secular dictionary, maybe. Right. And you you have to really break that down. And and headship does not mean superiority. No, either. it doesn't. So, yeah. just, you know, like if you, you can recognize the differences without anybody being devalued. Yeah, that's good. Recognizing differences without being devalued. I like that. Yeah. Why do you think that's so hard for people? It's those scriptures. And it's I those think scriptures. It's society and, um, I mean, women women in, like, women's movements and women couldn't vote and there's things like that that they didn't see as fair for so long, even here in America in the short, I mean, if we look in history, this is, you know, biblical times is so long ago, but right. even in our, just our recent history, right. there's been a struggle between man and woman. So it, it's got to transfer into the churches somehow, some yeah. way. There's that extreme of a, a guy looking at a woman saying, oh, she's an object. And then there's the other extreme of women looking at men saying, they're the reason everything is wrong and we don't need them. <laughs> yes. But the Bible really says, no, no, we're working together. Everybody yes. has meaning. Everybody has value. But because of how the world depicts the church and the worldliness that has crept into the church, it's hard for men and women in ministry 
to oftentimes work together. And then you do find those pockets where, where they are just thriving and valuing mm -hmm. each other. And you're like, this is amazing. Yeah. Because that's a foretaste of what heaven is going to be like. Yes. Right? The, the whole concept of naked and unashamed that men and women were going to see each other and go, hi. And that's it. There's, there's no weird, unnecessary tension and stuff between the genders because we're like, oh, there's God's glory. Right. And we can see each other without shame, without embarrassment. Yeah. That's a really cool thing to look forward to. Yes. So, um, we don't see men and women as the same. So, how can we value differences without worshiping womanhood or, or worshiping manhood, but really worshiping the God who made us different? I think knowing what the Bible says. And I, and I will say this, even in my, um, I worked at a college for a long time and they sent me to conflict training. And, the, and con, the, one of the sections of the training was that, gender differences and learning to work with people. I mean, you have to learn, like if you're working in a, like conflict in a workplace, those, all of those trainings will have that section of it. And there's age differences that, you know, you, you're working with a different generation or you're working, you know, they have, there's so many different things out there, you know, your personality differences, right. your, you know, they do true colors and I'm a blue green, you know, and, and right. there's things like that, but they're really, even the secular world is seeing that there is value in understanding and respecting who people are so that you can work with them. Understanding that everybody's not like me helps me. And I don't want everybody to be like me. You know, there, and I don't, you know, it, it, my, like God's, I feel like God has told me and my husband that we complement each other. Mm. That, uh, and I think that's the way it is in ministry, in the church, we complement each other. Everybody's different, everybody has their own strengths. God has given each person in the body. Yep. I mean, that's scriptural, but, he has uniquely gifted everybody to do something different. And if everybody was the same thing or the same person, you know, you, 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 there's just a million different ways to look at that. Um, like my husband is a go, go, go and long-term vision person. Right. And if we were all like that, none of the details would ever get done. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. You know, and then I'm this detail person. I keep touching my mic, sorry. You're fine. I'm this detail person, and if you if it's me, we'll never do anything because I'm so bogged down in the details. Right. And that's just one example that that we have to recognize the differences, and women do think different right. generally. Now generally. there are some, you know, you can't say all women say this or all men do this, Exceptions but generally prove rules. Yeah. yeah, and and I knowing this and working together, I think it's. First, understanding that there's differences, but really diving down and understanding what Scripture says about personhood and about being created at God's image and understanding and, and breaking down those Scriptures of submission because, I mean, later on, Paul says that we submit to one another. Right. So, the, you know, what is it? And I think also for the women in ministry type of thing, you really have to go back and understand that those instances of women not being in ministry were addressing problems of that day and time. Right. And so it's, it's just very interesting that you have to, it's hard just to pick up the Bible and read it. And you, sometimes you really have to say, God, help me with this. Yep. Help me to really see how you see it. Uh, and, and just, I, you know, there's some scriptures that you really, um, you don't completely understand sometimes, right? but you trust God. Yeah. And it's just like the Godhead to me, they submit to one another, the Godhead, mm -hmm. and they're the one and they're different and it's just, that's kind of muddy. Yeah. But it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And there's just some things you just have to say, God made us different, it's beautiful. It, I don't really understand what he was thinking or, and you just go with yeah. it. There's just some things that you trust God with. The world is in complete opposition to Christianity. Oh, yes. And what's interesting is that the world wants everything that God has to offer. Peace, love, joy, but they want it without God. And as Christians, we yeah, know that good. if we try to get anything apart from God that he's offering, or we try to make it our own, it, it's going to crumble. So gender yes. identity is not a, it's not a bad thing. It's what I tell my daughters that are like, I have, I have three little girls, and it's like, there's nothing wrong with being a girl. Right. There's nothing wrong with this. Because of the type of world we live in, we're going to have to be a little bit more cautious. We're going to have to be a little bit more careful. So we're going to stay with mommy. We're going to stay with daddy. They're about to start school. And I'm like, if a boy touches you, here's how we appropriately deal with that. Yeah. 
may or may not include hurting the boy. Um, <laughs> but I, well, I won't go there. But the whole notion is there's nothing wrong with being a boy. And there's nothing wrong with being a right. girl. But because the world hates God's design and, and hates God's order, they much prefer their own wisdom, which ultimately is chaos, and everything's going to fall apart. So apart from God, gender doesn't make sense. And apart from God, gender isn't beautiful. And even though the world wants, That's good. even though the world wants gender to make sense and they want it to be beautiful, because of sin, it th they're going to struggle with it, and it's 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 ultimately going to turn in on itself and it's going to crumble. Yes. Well, Ginger, thank you so much for oh. this conversation, um, for letting me come to your beautiful studio. Oh, this is you. so cool. Um, I love all the baby photos and the scarves and things. This is this is pretty. This is pretty cool. So thank you so much for having me and letting me come and talk to you about how even in the conflict of gender, God can bring forth ministry to minister not only to um, his people, but ultimately to our neighbors in the world. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming.